Uh, SGA, of course, of course it was SGA with the game winner with a second left on the clock. And one right there, um, by the way. They clinched the playoff spot. He uh, ended up with 19. Josh Giddy with 16, 13 rebounds, 12 assists, and Jalen freaking Williams, 33 points. Uh, the game. game winner was with 2.6 left on the clock. It was such a high drama ending to this game, but if we didn't have Nikola Jokic, is he 100% the MVP? Or is he, I mean, look, Lou's sticking with it, he still is, so. Yeah, and there's no Jokic for sure, because now look, at now they're half a game up, they have solely in the number one seed. Aye, that shot. The thing back. this kid has done, look how he reacts to just, just another chill. day, just, just another shot that he even said after the game. He practiced his shots, he wanted to get to this, he's taken thousands and millions of these jumpers, gets right to it, the guy is, the guy is so calm, so collected. It's crazy because he's still so young too. So yeah, I mean, yes. I think with with Joel going down, it kind of became this two man race, and now it's hard. We said it. Lou's been on them since day one. Yeah. And the fact that if they do Maybe. continue to get this number one seed, <laughs> it's hard not to not to go to to go this way. But this was an unbelievable game, unbelievable shot. He struggled all night long too, and it yeah, didn't, it didn't matter. Jalen Williams was great, at 30 plus points, kind of was dominant down the stretch. They still knew who to get the ball to. It's SGA, and and he got it done. Why, what is the thing that will keep him from getting it? I know Jokic is a big name, has been doing it, but. I got this stupid smile on my face you because really do. I think that shot does it. Really? Yeah, the number one seed, that shot. Listen, we love style. We, we like cool things. We like buzzer beaters. We like game winners. That, that did it. You know, Jokic has, he has those games where he fills up stat sheets, but it's like, it's so. It's just anticlimactic, you know what I mean? And, and this right here, and, and with voters, I think I think this does it. He's he's been doing it all a year. He's been leading his basketball team. I, I feel more confident about my pick than any time before. So I have a question about this particular game, just because it was such high drama and it was so much fun to watch. Um, and the biggest knock against this Thunder team, no matter where they are in the Western Conference at any moment, <clears throat> is that they're too young to make a long run. Mm -hmm. Does a game and the way it ends? like yesterday, do anything to change that? I think they put that narrative to bed a while ago. All right. You know, this team is dead serious. One thing, two things that the Oklahoma City Thunder have working for them that you can buy, chemistry and confidence. These young guys play with so much confidence, and they play well together. You have those two things, they're the real deal. You know, mm. early on, Chandler and I, we know how this game go. It's gonna, it's gonna be ups and downs, it's gonna be peaks and valleys for young teams. They hadn't went through a lot of adversity. They've been steady, they've been going, they've, been going straight ahead, and all of this is, is on the back of SGA and the Jalen Williams and, and the Chet Holmgrens. These guys are fully loaded. They're a really good, good young basketball team. So I don't think yesterday was the, was the measuring stick. <laughs> I don't think the, the Knicks were the measuring stick. Yeah. But I think that was a big win for them going into the last two weeks of the season and they can carry it over into the playoffs. And by the way, this is a team that's a young team. We always talk about their youth. We haven't seen Very. them do it in the postseason, but when they continue to win this many games and they do have bright moments like this, they've beaten good teams. They've they've absolutely ran bad teams out of the gym. They've shown <laughs> us a little bit of everything. They've won them with their defense. They've won with their scoring. They've had close right. games where they've had closers. Jalen Williams one of the leading scorers in the NBA in fourth quarter points. So it's not just SGA either. We talk about Chet all the time, how he's had a, a hell of a year. Josh Giddey's had a great year. They have this Lou Dort who kind of is that fifth starter that literally plays defense and guards the best offensive player on the other team every single night. So they just fit. And early, I remember when I watched them, it just kind of looked like a fun young AU team just because how they played, so young. how young they were. This is a team that was also just in New York City on a Saturday night and still came out and handled their business on a Sunday on a Sunday Easter game. So this this that was a mature win for me. And I do think Jalen Brunson got fouled on the play before that could have been an and one. So did but he. Doesn't matter. SGA got to his spot. He rose over McBride, and that's what big time players do. And you know what else we're not talking about? If they get Gordon Hayward going again, mm -hmm. that changes everything oh, for them in, in their that. bench play. Yeah, he's he's been struggling a little bit trying to find his footing with this team. But if they can get him going, he gives them a great look, gives them a stretch four that they can rely on coming off that bench. And the size thing still. <laughs> when you have Chet is really your only big, and you got Mascala and Biombo are your only bigs off the bench. They're a little thin there. But I think that's yeah. a problem for only a couple of teams. It's going to be a problem with Denver, and it'll be a problem if they get to the finals and play a Joel and B. Other than that, I think they're, there, they're in good position. There are moments yesterday, like when he goes up against Hart and Shine, you're just like aware right, of how he's bullied. kind of, not frail, but he doesn't look like he can hold it down against some of the big dudes yet.
that might be coming. Um, Josh Giddy, by the way, th there are some dudes that love playing at the Garden, and I, I'm assuming we're going to go ahead and throw him in that category because now he's played three games there and has a triple double in each of those. What is it about the Garden, y'all? Chandler, what is? I, there's some guys that just. <laughs> I love playing at the Garden. I mean, listen, that's the. I don't why, know, are why, are you, why are you laughing? I'm immature. Yeah. Go ahead. You, he. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Listen, this is the I Mecca. This is the Mecca. As an athlete, as a competitor, you want to perform on the greatest stage. That's MSG. So this kid, sure. maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's not, but these, he seems to continue to have great games uh, in this building, and it's cool to go there. You see, a, you see everybody. You see all the stars. You see. People that you've seen on TV your entire life watching you and most most of the time talking trash to you. So much trash. Their Nick. So, yeah. uh, listen, this guy, he likes the bright lights, and uh, it's a great, fun fun place to play. What you got, Lou? All right, Lou, why don't you not touch that, and we'll just keep it moving. <laughs> I won't touch it. Fair I enough. I promise you. Um, Shams, I know you're still there. I hope you're eating cake in between shots of you. But the uh, the Knicks, no Julius Randle, no OG Ananobi yet. What can you tell us about that? I'm nervous. Yeah, these are serious losses for the Knicks. I mean, obviously, OG Ananobi, he's been out since March 16th, inflamed elbow. Uh, the hope is that the inflammation goes down. At some point, he's going to be able to come back. The, the hope is, has been that it's going to be when, uh, more of like which day exactly, which hmm. game exactly, when is he going to wake up feeling better than if. Uh, but with Julius Randle, it's a little bit more precarious. I mean, this is someone that's been out since January 27th. We're already into April and he still has not done anything more than controlled contact with that dislocated shoulder. And Josh Hart, his comments I thought last night were very telling. He said, we have to operate as if neither of those two is going to be back in the lineup. So for the Knicks, it's really a wait-and-see approach. It seems OG Ananobi is more likely than, than, than Julius Randle at this point, but we'll see. Um, and Mitchell Robinson also missed the game last night uh, with, with, his, with the ankle injury as well. You know what's interesting to me about this, Shams, is they, it is true when you have guys missing like they do, and they've had Mitchell Robinson in and out, they've had Julius Randle out, they've had OG now for quite a time, you do see light at the end of the tunnel when you're playing and you're keeping your head above water. They're 15 and 13 without those guys, and then OG came out for those back yeah. those three games, and they won all three of those games. <clears throat> so it is kind of annoying when you are one of the players that are playing and you keep hearing how good we're going to be when everyone's <laughs> back. But... But Tibbs' rotation to me are crazy. Last night, Josh Hart, 45 minutes. Miles McBride, 45 minutes. Dante DiVincenzo, 39 minutes. Oh, slow night. Meanwhile, Bogdanovich, who they literally, I thought was going to be like this deal breaker, was going to really help their team, plays 10 minutes. Alec Burks plays Have 12 minutes. Have you seen minutes. them playing? Mm -hmm. I know, but it's like almost like Tibbs has his guys that defend and are tough and hard. He, like, he did the same thing with Fournier. But when you play these guys that many minutes and you're talking about all these injuries, you would think they would, he would kind of mix it up a little bit, especially with guys like Badanovich, who they kind of made the move for to better their team. And Alec Burke's the same way. So I don't understand necessarily the, the clip at the minutes that these guys are playing, especially when they have three or four rotation guys out. But they have a lot of talent on that bench that's not really getting the minutes that they could be getting. I think... For my money, I think he has tried to put Bogdanovich and Burks in there. As a matter of fact, I would argue that he's put Burks in there longer than he probably should have played in some of those games. And I think he's trying to get them to be a part of it. Have you noticed I've been watching a lot of Knicks games? Um, I think he wants them to be, but they're not producing. So wh what is he supposed to do? Leave them out there and flounder? Well, it's also, uh, basketball is a rhythm game. you got to allow them opportunity to catch a rhythm as well. You know, playing but you can't, you're battling for each game. You can't, af right, you can't but, afford it. So... What do you so? What do you do? You you can't get a rhythm. Yeah, you can't. I just get a don't know if a recipe playing two or three starters forty five out of the forty eight minutes yeah. every and he single learned, night he, is is a, is the key to success. He should have learned that from experience. Yeah, we, you know we beat them in the playoffs 2012, 13 because guys playing too many minutes. It's a lot of minutes. We talk about this whole load management that doesn't exist in New York. That doesn't exist with Tibbs. But I think I think he's. This is my argument. McBride, for example, was given an opportunity to come in. Injuries and all that stuff. And he has literally shown how valuable he is. So you can't take him out. Those but, guys have come in and not done that. Yeah, so then they're can out. You, how can you do it in eight to ten minutes? I don't know, Lou. You got eight to ten minutes to no. shine. Eight to ten minutes. So eight to ten minutes a game, that's a minute and a half, two minute stretches. A half. You can do a lot in two minutes. You can shine. 